Hi everyone! Ascend is one of the basic abilities introduced in Tears of the Kingdom, and it's pretty straightforward. If you stand below a platform or object, and you're not too far from it, activating the power will send you flying upwards through the ceiling and have you spat out at the next available spot above that platform or object. It seems almost deceptively simple, so I wanted to know how I'd rebuild this in something like Game Builder Garage. In traditional game development, this would be solved easily with a ray cast and some basic math. Here's how that would work. Link walks beneath a platformer object. We send a ray cast up and we generate three positions. A, which is the player position, B, entering the platform, and C, exiting. Then we do a simple calculation. If the Y value difference of position A and B are less than the maximum distance to activate the ability, and we press the button, then we would teleport the player above the location of position C, which is where the ray exits the platformer object above Link. Pretty straightforward. Now in Game Builder Garage, we don't have access to ray casts, but in the past, I've gotten a around this by creating a makeshift ray. You can launch a smart object, or an object with some kind of sensor on it, in a straight line, and you can recreate a sort of slower version of a ray cast. And that is precisely the basis for this build, so let's get started. Right now, our game world has these two solid objects. One of them is low to the ground and should be able to be ascended, and the other is high up and too far for the ability to work. We're starting with our basic character controller that we always do. And the first thing we're going to do is add in our fancy object. It's going to be the basis of our makeshift ray. We'll use a small apple. We'll make it non-solid so that it goes through objects and give it zero gravity. Then we'll add in a teleport entrance and teleport exit on the A channel for now. We'll connect the entrance to the apple and the exit to the player. We'll want to launch the apple above the player. So we'll go into the teleport object exit. We'll reset physics, we'll send it in the Y positive direction, and we'll give it a launch speed of 25. Then we'll add a button to use to activate the ability. We can add in a button press node on for the button Y and set it to on press. This will activate the teleport entrance. Now we need to add the brain to our smart raycast object. We're gonna add a touch sensor at the default size that checks for whatever floors or platforms could be made out of in our game world. We'll attach that to the apple and then add a looping sound to debug and let us know that the smart ray cast is currently going through an object that you can ascend through. Then we'll adjust the teleport entrance to only teleport the apple object so that we don't send our player flying into the sky. As of right now, it's working. We're sending our apple up into the sky and it has the ability to gather information about coming into contact with objects. Now we're going to add a flag node on. This flag is going to represent whether the apple has touched something since being launched. Pressing the button will set the flag off. The touch sensor will turn the flag on, so it'll get reset every single time we launch that apple. Then we'll add a not node on and an and node on. We want to make it so that if the flag is on, meaning it has touched something, and it now is currently not touching something at the same time, then we want to trigger the player being teleported above that object. So we'll take a trigger from zero node on and attach it to the end of this and node on. And we'll send that into a teleport entrance and exit on the B channel that we'll add in. We'll attach the entrance to the person, make sure that they're on the right channel and make it so that it only accepts person objects. And we'll set the exit to the apple. And we'll go into the exit teleport node on and make sure that it's applying a Y negative force so that it launches the player down. If we maintained it launching upward, then the player would just fly up along with the apple. That's gonna give some resistive force and launch the player down, even though the apple keeps traveling upward. Once we're done with this, we're gonna need to put the apple away or else it'll keep going up into the sky infinitely and we don't want that. We're also gonna use this later when we need to cancel out if we don't hit an object in time. We'll add our final teleport entrance and exit on the C channel. We'll use this channel to send the apple to its phantom zone, where it sort of just sits and waits to be used again. Connect the trigger from zero node on to the teleport entrance on the C channel. Attach the C entrance to the apple, and check that it only teleports apples. Reset the apple physics on the C teleport exit so that it just floats in place, and throw the teleport exit somewhere out of sight. To prevent some bugs where the player gets sent along with the apple to the phantom zone, you can add a very tiny 0.01 timer after the trigger before activating the C channel teleport that sends the apple away. That will make sure that there's no confusion in the logic. And right now, the ability technically works. 
Apple will go through an object, our logic will all trigger in time, and the player will appear above an object, and then the Apple will put itself away. But the problem remains that our ascend will never fail at this point. The Apple will either keep going up until it touches an object, or gets deleted by going out of bounds of our game world. This also means you can ascend to an object above you no matter how far up it is. So that's the next thing we're going to fix. And it's actually really simple. We'll add a timer set to 0.5 seconds. This is custom. You can play around with your level and see how far up the apple gets within a certain period of time. I decided on the cutoff of 0.5 seconds, since for example, it means that in my game world, the apple will disappear before touching that second green platform. Then we'll add an and note on and a not. If this timer completes its function and the object has not touched something yet, then we'll send it away by connecting the trigger from zero node on from before to the teleport entrance on the C channel that we just created. And we'll add a sound in to let the player know that they can't use that ability right now. It's basically complete for our purposes. And what's cool too is that now you can use the ascend even when you're not touching the floor. So you can kind of actually create some interesting platforming abilities with that and extend the ascend ability past what you can do in Tears of the Kingdom. But if you wanted to add that floor touching limitation, it would be as simple as adding a touch sensor attached to the Y negative of the player and throwing that into an and node on with the button press. Then you can send that output to whatever input is currently taking the button by itself. Then you'd have to be touching the floor and pressing the button for any of the other logic to activate. I think it's pretty awesome how easily we're able to recreate almost every aspect of this ability in Game Builder Garage without too much logic, and you can even extend it and add your own twist on it to make different kinds of games. There are a lot of ways to use this sort of fancy raycast since it kind of helps bridge the gap between the tools in Game Builder Garage and a tool like a raycast that you would have in a proper game engine.